the mighty warship Vasa was going to be Sweden's crown jewel. Instead, it turned out to be one of Sweden's biggest blunders ever. Imagine the following scene. The year is 1628 and you're king of Sweden. Your name is Gustavus Adolphus and you're the son of the warrior king Charles IX and you inherited three wars from your dear old dad. You've already successfully made peace with the Danes and the Russians, but now you're dealing with yet one more war, this time with Sigismund of Poland. But you have a secret ace up your sleeve. For two years you've been building a super weapon. In the year 1628, the warship Vasa is the biggest and most intimidating ship that the world has ever seen. It has 48 24 pound cannons, 8 3 pound cannons, 2 1 pound cannons, and 6 artillery pieces. The Vasa will ensure that Sigismund won't dare attack Sweden, and that the Russians will tremble in fear, just in case they get any ideas. The date is now August 10 and the Vasa is complete, and it's time for her maiden voyage from her dock in Stockholm. You watch with pride as the majestic ship sails through the city harbor. People cheer and everything is going your way. Then suddenly there's a gust of wind and the ship wobbles. It's okay, she straightened up again. Everyone sighs in relief, but it's not long until another gust of wind makes the ship wobble once more. This time, the warship Vasa keels over on her side and sinks to the bottom of Stockholm Harbor, where she will sleep for 333 years. King Gustavus Adolphus immediately demands a hearing to determine who's to blame for this whole disaster. And what's the result of that hearing? Well, I'll get back to that in just a little bit. I've already made a video about the Vasa a few years ago, but things have changed since then. I have a 4K camera instead now, for example, and I wanted to get new and improved footage. I've also changed my vlog style to include a lot more information, so I think that this will be more useful to potential visitors to Stockholm. And finally, they have a special exhibition right now called Brick Rex, where you can see Lego models of famous wrecks. And that's a big reason for me to go to the Vasa Museum, at least. So it's about time that I return to the Vasa to tell you more about this uh, infamous Swedish blunder and show you what to expect from a visit to the Vasa Museum. The Vasa Museum is located on the island of Djurgården, where you can also find the Open Air Museum Skansen, the amusement park Grönalund, and many other museums. The easiest way to get here is by tram from Sergelstorg, the central square in Stockholm. If you're really lucky, you can even catch the museum tram for an even more exciting ride. Standard public transport tickets are valid on that one as well. A single public transport ticket is a whopping 42 Swedish crowns, so make sure you buy a 3-day travel card or something equivalent to make the visit a bit more affordable. However, a more scenic way to get to Djurgården is to take a walk along the lovely Parade Street Strandvägen. I especially recommend it during summer, but if it's raining or if it's winter, yeah, take the tram instead. A ticket to the Vasa Museum costs between 170 Swedish crowns and 220 Swedish crowns, depending if it's low season or high season. Or shoulder season, like now in March, when it costs 190 Swedish crowns. It's not the cheapest museum to visit in Stockholm, but if you're into naval history, or history in general, then it's well worth it. The Vasa Museum is also included in the Stockholm Pass, but I personally don't recommend it, because I never use half of the perks of cards like that. Anyway, let me show you around so you can see what to expect from a visit to this museum. The Vasa Museum has six different floors, and you enter on floor number four. On floor 4 you can get a great view of the ship and learn more about its history and how it was salvaged. 
Salvaging the Vasa was a massive effort that started in 1956 when divers went on 32 meters into the cold and murky waters to examine the wreck. People debated for years how to get the Vasa to the surface. Everything from filling the hull with ping pong balls to freezing the Vasa to a solid block of ice was discussed and rejected. Eventually, they decided to dig tunnels underneath the ship so they could place thick steel cables underneath it. Then they slowly lifted the ship, inch by inch. The whole operation of getting the Vasa to the surface started in 1959, but it wasn't until 1961 that the ship finally reached sunlight. At 9.03 in the morning on April 24, 1961, the first parts of the Vasa finally breached the surface after 333 years in the waters of Stockholm Harbor. Archaeologists had a field day after that and they spent several years exploring the wreck. Aside from the ship itself, there were 30,000 different items that were salvaged. Cannons, cutlery, old food, 4,000 coins and a lot more. And a lot of this is on display at the Vasa Museum, on the upper floors. In the 1600s, some of the Vasa's cannons were salvaged with the help of a diving bell. People went down 30 meters into the murky and freezing waters of Stockholm Harbor. It's described that when they took up the diver after 15 minutes, he was shivering with cold. I think I prefer diving in Indonesia. On floor 5, you can see an exhibition about what life was like on board the Vasa. All of this gives you a unique insight into what life was like for a sailor in the 17th century. A tiny Bible and a big beer. People had their priorities straight back then already. The exhibition continues on floor 6, where you can get a close-up on the backside of the Vasa with its intricate sculptures. There were more than 700 colorful sculptures on the ship, and many of them are remarkably well preserved. The Vasa was intended to be more than a simple warship. It was intended to inspire awe into everyone who saw it. The message behind all of these sculptures is that Gustavus Adolphus was the rightful king of Sweden, and he was powerful and had God on his side. There were 20 sculptures of Roman emperors on the ship, and a 3-meter lion holding the Vasa coat of arms. It's not a very pretty lion, because as we all know, Swedes have no idea how lions actually look. There were also biblical figures like Gideon and David, as well as many other mythical and historical figures. There were also two figures of Polish noblemen on board, but uh, those were placed so that you would see them when you come out of the privy. Everyone who relieved themselves could then look at a humiliated Polish nobleman. And if that's not enough, you can also see some of the cannons that were on board the ship. And you can also enter a model of the gun deck. And speaking of cannons, let's talk a bit more about why the Vasa sank during her maiden voyage. There were hundreds of people on board the Vasa when she sank, but most of them survived. Around 30 people died, but most of them managed to swim ashore. Henrik Hubertsson was the shipwright in charge of constructing the Vasa, and he was, obviously, the first one to be blamed. The Vasa was a complete disaster. It was top-heavy, and the weight distribution was way off in general. It had way too much mass above the water level and way too little below it. There were also a lot of heavy cannons on board. The captain in charge had decided that the gun ports should be open during the maiden voyage, so when the ship started to sink, even more water could flood in through the open ports. All in all, there was a lot of blame to be passed around on a lot of different people. The day after the disaster, the ship's captain, Surfing Hansson, was captured and interrogated. And the day after that, on August 12, the first reports were sent to the king. You know that bit I told in the beginning about how Gustavus Adolphus saw the Vasa sail off, first with pride and then with horror? Well, all of that was complete rubbish. Gustavus Adolphus was actually down in Prussia at the time, fighting the Thirty Year War. But when he did hear the news, he was absolutely furious. As 
special hearing committee of 17 people was set up, and on the 5th of September, the hearing started at the castle Three Crowns in Stockholm. Commanders and shipwrights and everyone in charge were brought forth to explain themselves. A lot of the records from the hearing have gone suspiciously missing though, possibly because a lot of what was said wasn't very popular. People started blaming each other left and right. The shipwright in charge of building the Vasa had fallen ill, so his apprentice had taken over. The shipwright blamed the apprentice, and the apprentice blamed the shipwright's designs. The person financing the project was also blamed, because he was ultimately in charge, and he had also signed off on the designs. However, it turns out that he, in turn, had also had the designs signed off by the king himself. Also, the people who had done stability tests reported severe issues, but everyone was afraid to act on that, because the king had demanded that the ship be finished as quickly as possible without any delays. In the end, no one was punished for the sinking of the Vasa. Too much of the blame could be traced back to the king himself, and that was simply unacceptable. The only one who received most of the blame was the shipwright, Henrik Hubertsson, because by that time he had already died. That dead man turned out to be the only possible scapegoat for this whole disaster. There's a lot more to say about the Vasa, and there's a lot more to see at the Vasa Museum, but I hope that this gave you a little bit of an insight into what you can find here. If you're interested in history or archaeology, there's a lot of information for you here. And if you just want to see the amazingly well-preserved ship, then you can spend a lot of time just gazing at the Vasa itself. Or maybe you want to see all the little pieces of day-to-day -day life in the 1600s that you can see here. Regardless of why you decide to visit the Vasa Museum, there's something for just about everyone. The Vasa Museum is one of my favorite museums in Stockholm, and it's a significant part of Swedish history. The mighty warship Vasa was supposed to be Sweden's crown jewel back in 1628, and instead it turned out to be one of Sweden's biggest blunders ever. And that's about it. I hope that this gave you a little bit of an insight into what to expect from a visit to the Vasa Museum. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now have a look at this video as well for even more Swedish history.